And Andrea, when I've been sitting in on rehearsals, you have been beaming. Every day that you've been conducting these rehearsals, you've looked very happy, and, and it's been very clear from the beginning how much you love the score. And I was just wondering whether you could say something about what it is about the score that you love so much. It's very difficult to pick up single elements because probably the the uh, the thing that passionate me the most in in the piece is the whole piece. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I mean is that the the organic the organicity of of the narration the the musical. By the way, one thing that I wanted to tell you, I read the book the the novella about probably ten years ago, so I was very confident with the story, of course, and. By working on this score, it was probably the only time in my life that I had this experience that I had exactly the same feelings in, uh, in the narration, the way that the opera uh, takes the, the emotion of the characters, the, 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 the development of the story, the, the nonverbal quality of, uh, of the piece was for me, brought me directly to the, to, the, to the Steinbeck novella. So for me, the honesty in which the, the score is composed towards John Steinbeck's work is, is one of the experiences that made me uh, develop what you called happiness mm -hmm. in, uh, in working to this, uh, in this production. Well, there are so many elements. It would be, I will later, with the help of our singers, I will pick up some, some examples. But uh, as simple as my may sound, is probably, the, the, my answer is the whole of it. It's, uh, it's the way that the, the whole org organism of this opera brings this story to, to the audience and to, to us as musicians. We're just talking to Andrea about how, how he's been looking very happy during the rehearsals and how much he loves the score. So we've just been talking about what it is about the score. I guess the other thing that emerged in conversation with you, Andrea, was that um, you have a very strong commitment to works that have a very strong humanitarian message and theme. And so obviously this fits into that absolutely perfectly. So I was just wondering whether you could say something about the other kinds of works that you've done that, that fit into that kind of portfolio, if you like. Well, there's, there's, there's probably a general statement which I, I'm, I'm working into in, uh, for music, theater, and opera uh, in general, especially more than the modern repertoire. So that, for example, we know that um, for, for in the traditional repertoire and older pieces, we have very, very often metaphoric stories um, uh, that, that are told to tell something else. And I think that one of the most interesting um, elements, and also one, the duties, in my opinion, of, of modern theater, modern and modern opera, is to, um, to address the, the story in a different way. I think the very first example was actually, um, that, that, that strikes my mind, is, is uh, Shostakovich's Lady Macbeth of Zensk, mm -hmm. which is a journalistic opera, in a way. So, um, and the title of Mice and Men, the original title of Steinbeck was Something That Happened. Mm. So it's, it's a different way of, um, of achieving uh, theatrical dramaturgy, which is, to me, is a, is a major uh, element of, of the modernity mm. in theater. Which is, by the way, kind of independent of which style of music or of narration you use. We were, t we were talking about Dead Man Walking, mm. for example, as, a, as an operatic, one of the interesting operas the last years. So the way of, of opera to, to, get, to get into the nerve into of, of uh, modern reality, of social life, it's to me, it's kind of a necessity. Mm -hmm. I love this word. I love the word necessity. And I, I, um, um, I worked with passion with composers that, that share this, this attitude. I'm, as myself, as a composer, I, I work with this kind of stuff and with this kind of dramaturgy, and I think it's, uh, it's important. It's, it's, it's important to get back to the, to the middle of what's, what the human condition is. Mm -hmm. Not in a metaphoric way, but to talking about from people to people. Um, it's very simple what I'm saying. It may be superficial, but no, I hope it's is, uh, is a beginning of, of explaining what is, what is musical theater for me. Can you say something, Andrea, too, about what you think makes this piece sound so American? Because to me, it conveys space in a way that composers like Copeland also do. Mm -hmm. And is that a question of a particular style 
that Carlyle has. I mean, can you talk about his particular signature as an American composer? This is, uh, we were again, we were speaking about that just moments ago. And um, there's a number of elements. I have to say I have problems in answering this question because I always have problems putting things in a box. But it's true, it's true. It, it's, uh, it's pretty much evident and self-explanatory that, that the score we are we're working on is, is a very peculiarly American. Well, if you think about composers with, uh, like, like Bernstein or, or Samuel Bava or, or Aaron Copland, you find uh, a line of, uh, uh, of probably there's, there's a combination of a, a harmonic language and a rhythmical language, which is probably the most, um, the most clear element. But for example, um, we, we, a, very, a very interesting sentence of, of, uh, of Kala just a few minutes ago, and it said that when, when for example, we listen to Kurt Weil, after he went to America for the, for the Second World War issue. Uh, we hear American music, but composed by an, by an European, we hear it. Mm -hmm. While there's something in the, in the musical language which uh, goes back to the roots when we listen to Aaron Copland, for example. Mm -hmm. Allow me to stop here, because it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's something non-verbal, actually. It, it, it's something that you perceive very clearly when you hear it. It's, it's also the orchestration, it's also the, uh, the, the, the a certain uh, harmonic combination, which I, again, I will try to highlight in some example later. Um, well, it is American. What, Ameri what it means being American, it's very difficult for me to, to pinpoint. I wanted to pick up some example from, uh, from the score, and I'd like to do it uh, in a, I like I'm, I like to highlight some hidden parts of the score, because the, the score is full of phenomenal, spectacular melodies and very uh, theatrical moments, which are so self-explanatory and was, which are also so ex, uh, ex, so so beautiful that I like to keep them for the performance. And I like to find uh, a couple of little examples, which are. Mm, um, which can highlight the way Carlyle works theatrically with the musical uh, elements, which stroke my attention from the very beginning when I approached this score. And for example, one thing that, uh, that I, I, I really think is masterful is how Carlyle works with, diff with, with the same materials in different moments of the piece, of, of the story, and how he changes just very, very little elements to highlight how this particular uh, musical moment is used in the story. So for example, we just exactly the, the, the character of George. At the very beginning, George and Lenny are, um, are, are chased by the police. They, uh, they eventually escape the police. And when they are safe, George says, uh, he's completely frustrated and says, you have done it again, we are in trouble, it's your fault, we lost our jobs. And then he eventually sings a, a line, a melody, which we learn just shortly later is a melody which is a kind of uh, repetition in the relationship between, uh, between Lenny and, and George. And uh, the text says, my life would be so simple by myself, I could live so easy all alone, no mess, no fuss, no trouble, none at all, just me to take care of, I, me, and mine. And this is a melody which is kind of, uh, um, uh, of, a, of a signature of the relationship between Lenny and, and George, because this melody was sung probably in the past of their relationship so many times, because it's not the first time that Lenny and George get in trouble because Lenny is so, uh, is so unable to stay out of trouble, actually. So this is the, the first time we hear this melody. so simple by myself I could live so easy all alone no mess no fuss no trouble not at all just me to take care of I me and mine without you Without you, I could save my pay. 
Without you, I could settle down and maybe lead a decent life with no one but me to take care of. No one else to look after a life free of trouble, a life all alone. But no, I gotta travel with you. Hold your hand and wipe your nose and God knows what. And no matter how hard I try, I can't keep you out of trouble, so why do I stay? much later, at the end of the piece, when actually Lenny has already killed the lady, the, the Curly's wife, and he knows, he sam somehow knows that he's done something really bad this time. And eventually George finds him, um, and George, at this time, has already decided that he will be the one that he will kill Lenny, because otherwise the, the people from Curly will kill him. And he decided that he will be the one to do it because he wants Lenny to die happy. And this is, of course, is from the human point of view, probably the most tragic situation you can imagine yourself. So um, George finds Lenny eventually, and Lenny says, I might, we must, I've, I might have lost our jobs again. I might have lost our jobs again. Uh, and then try to do something that sometimes children do. Like, just shout at me, just give me hell, and then there, maybe everything will be fine again. So, aren't you gonna give me hell, George? Come on, come on, George, give me hell. And George, to, to try to calm Lenny down, sings this melody again, but Carlisle puts some little poses in between the notes, so that it's very clear that the the uh, human attitude with which George sings this melody is completely different. He's completely, he's not frustrated or angry as it was before, he's desperate now. And he makes some, some stops. He doesn't want to go on. It's difficult for him to sing. And then Lenny says to him, come on, George, come on, you know the story, you know the melody, keep it singing and make it to end for him. So I like also the... The, to have this second appearance of this melody with in this completely new situation. The, the, the melody is the same, but please note how the, the theatrical composition is different. <laughs> myself I could live so easy all alone Come on George you know no mess no fuss no trouble not at all just me to take care of I me and I That's enough, That's enough. And also the melody started slower. The, the first appearance is faster, the second is slower, and then Lenny brings it to the original tempo. This is for me uh, 
fantastic way of using musical materials to, to describe the development of the story. A very similar example is with another melody, um, and I take it again from the first act, is the melody where uh, George describes to Lenny the house that they want to achieve, that they want to buy. And this is, um, again, is a, is a song, is a melody that was sung so many times in the relationship of John and Lenny. It's, it's like a, probably every night uh, when they, they go to bed, they, George sings this melody to Lenny and to describe how beautiful the house will be that we'll eventually buy. back to the, to the end when George has achieved to calm down Lenny and he's now deciding how to do it. Lenny asks him, yeah, tell me about the house again. And George does it knowing that he's going to kill him in a few minutes. The melody is exactly the same, but listen to the piano. Mrs. Colla is a fantastic pianist. She didn't make mistakes. <laughs> Can you play the first chord, the, the last, the, uh, the, 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 the first first chord in, in the number 104? So in the original melody, in the original orchestration of melody, it was just strings, by the way, were consonants chords, very delicate, very uh, plain. And now you have a harp and two bassoons making a very low dissonance. Can you play it uh, isolated? And by the way, Carlyle chose bassoons in that region where that they cannot play too soft. So that you have to hear that and it hurts. It hurts very subtly, but it does. And this is the way that just with non-verbal and very, very delicate elements, the complete difference attitude of, of the singing uh, of George is highlighted in the score. Thank you. I know that we're going to have a, another little musical interlude. Maestro, would you like to um, lead us into the next and final musical moment? Yes. I chose the, uh, one of the to topical moments of Curly's wife, still in, in, uh, in the first act, when, when she comes in into the, into the bunkhouse where she's not supposed to come. Um, and she sings her frustration to, uh, towards his husband, her husband. She's married, actually, uh, uh, it's, it's just two weeks or two months at the very end, because it's, uh, there, there's two versions. The, the, the first version says that they are married for two weeks, and then in the, uh, in the, in the second version of the libretto, she says two months, which is probably more credible, I, I imagine. I think so, probably. 
Anyway, <laughs> anyway, she's already completely frustrated. In the next scene, uh, she, well, when she's going to be killed by, by, by accident by, by Lenny, she, uh, she, she wants to leave. She wants to leave to go for Hollywood because she's a very pretty girl. And uh, she sings this frustration um, in, uh, in front of, uh, of the, the bank of, of the ranch hands and, and all the people. And what fascinated me is that the complexity of the melodic line is very difficult, very, um, uh, is, a, is, a, is a melodic line which uh, it's very difficult to be realized in a sexy way, in a, in a smooth way, and uh, Jacqueline does it in a fantastic way. So it's also a tribute for me to, to her way of approaching this role. And the other part, the other thing is coming back to the, the same approach that I had with the other, with the other um, uh, fragments, is that pay attention to one melody which is uh, sung two times in this area, and, and when she says, um, I'm beginning to feel neglected. And she does it two times. The first time is faster than the second. And th this is another example how Carlyle uses slight difference in, the, in using the same music material to highlight the development of how the character uh, feels throughout the narration. Oh! 